Yeah, man. Some are purples, many with plus beats. Welcome to the black hole. Ableton Elive 11. The cool stuff. Let us go. Number one cool on the list is the Spectral Resonator. It sounds a little something like this. I can't hear it. If we listen to the Whirlizer track here. And pull it all the way up to wet, you'll hear something going on here. We can change the frequency in tones or in hertz. And it makes a lot of cool harmonical artifacts on it. You can make cool effects and shit with this, yeah. Very nice, very nice. Whatever. Let me show you the really cool with this. Set the spectral resonator to MIDI mode. Make a MIDI track. Choose your MIDI input channel right here. See? See, I've played some MIDI notes right here. This is the original without it. Now let's pull it up and see what happened. That is pretty radical. So you can actually take the identity, the timbre of the track and play with notes on top of it. And it'll sound like the actual instrument is playing it. Just tuning it a little bit like this, you know what I'm saying? Trying to find the character and the sound. Say you recorded a pia live piano and you feel there are some notes missing in there. Just take the spectral resonator and add them into it. That is by far the coolest thing I've seen in Ableton Live 11. But now it's gonna be stuck on the last MIDI note, so if we listen here... See, the Ghost Whirlitzer is playing that one constant note all the time, so we're gonna have to automate that too. And keep it on dry in the beginning, and then as we get to our MIDI action, we'll just fade in the wetness. Lo-fi lovers out there, you're gonna love the new Redux update. It's got a bunch of new parameters here instead of the one, two, or three that were there before. I already have my nice settings there. And a f filter. It's a lo-fi plugin, not a revolucion ni nada. But they went the extra mileage to make sure that you can shape it to the character that you want. And it works very well. Spectral time. I'm not even 100% sure what it does. It's got a freezer, it, no refrigerator, and a delay that's very special. And you can make some really cool special effects with this. Check this out. So this, without the delay, Cool delay. Let's tilt it. Noise and glitch people, you're gonna love this one, of course. I think the delay is the coolest part of it. I don't care too much about the freezer. I like my food hot. Oh yeah, if you want it to sound like a really, really, really low quality MP3, you can use the spray here. What else? There's a new reverb in town. Say hello to hybrid reverb. Check them out right here. And what is cool about it is it's, it's a mixture between two different reverbs. So on the left one, the yellow one, it's got a bunch of different profiles for different types of rooms and the reverberation going on in those rooms to get just that RT60 that you desire. And what's cool about it is you can actually drop a WAV file here using a file from the Amazing Drums kit right here. And it's gonna copy the profile of that space essentially. Piano slash. 
So rough, so tough, when you get on his case I called his bluff to point to the case So that's component one of the reverb and that one has obviously a whole bunch of different preset profiles for different room spaces and a whatnot. Just notice now too that it made this user tab and is containing all of the files in the folder. So if you have a shit ton of recordings where you're just recording different room spaces and you keep them in one folder, you will get access to browse between them right here instantly. Very comfortable. Other part of it uses algorithm, some shimmer, quartz, dark, dark hall, very customizable. And this is the blend between the two. Essentially, it's got everything that you need from it. You can control the send input straight away from here. It's got the pre-delay settings right there. Globally affecting feedback for the whole reverb module. Widen it out with that stereo. Put some vintage feel to it. And a built-in EQ just for the reverb. Neato. Let us check this new chorus ensemble thing out. I'm a big fan of choruses. I overuse it a lot. On the synthesizer sounds, I put so much chorus on everything that I just get a whole bunch of face errors and stuff. But it does not matter to me because I love my choruses. So let's see what this one is about. Let's just try it out here on the guitar sound. <laughs> It's a solid chorus slash ensemble slash vibrato in one with every parameter you need to tweak it the way you want it. Yeah, I like that. Not sure it turned my world upside down, but that's a cool, that's a cool thing to have. The phaser flanger. This doubler can be nice here to use for, you know, a little bit of a sway pitch shifting and, and widening of the sound in the stereo mix. I would imagine using this on vocals can be pretty good if you want uh, some more presence in the vocals, you know what I'm saying? Really nothing super revolutionary about this neither. But a handy tool to have. While we're in here, let me show you. If we were to group these two right here and go into our macros, there's some new features here. We can add more macros than before, less macros than before. I'm relatively new to Ableton Live, and I'm saying I've only been in it since version 10. But I do know that this is something that I think is cool. More control over the macros, the amount of macros, and the snapshot thing right here. So let's map some of these right here boom 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 these are the settings see these are the default settings that i like i'll make a new one snapshot right there that's our variation one and now we're just going bananas here with these. oh shit what happened i still like that i'll make a new variation but oh no what how do we get back to how it was before when we messed it all up we can just double click our first snapshot in variation one right there. So that to me, I don't know if that was there before, but it seems to me like a major improvement of the macros. It's a little bit like the locks on the native instruments machina. A purpose out there, you wanted to see the probability thing. So let's take a look at that. Let's open our MIDI clip. Quickly analyze it right there. First difference that you'll notice right here, you can see the actual note length on the velocity points. You can also open this little tab and set the probability of each note actually occurring in there. 
I'm a control freak myself. I don't really see the use of this. I would like to have... Compl- I, w- I want to know exactly what's happening. And I tell the notes when to come. But some of the more daring experimental producers out there, you're probably going to like this. Yeah, so you know how that sounds now. And now let's just fuck around with these some of these notes. So the lower it is, the less of a chance, the less of a probability you're going to have of this note actually playing back. Obviously, that's probably going to be cooler if you have uh, some very fast notes and lots of notes happening. Uh, then you can make some more unpredictable stuff, like you could fill out a whole scale of notes, pretty much. And we could actually, yeah, let's do that. And I'll show you another thing that's new. Amazing. So we have this sound here. Yeah, luckily our little tune right here is in C major. So what we can do when we're in the MIDI clip editor is press scale here and select our scale. And now we see our C major scale is highlighted. All of these yellow ones means we're sticking to the scale. So people who don't have uh, hearing can use this. And we can press the scale button right here to see only the notes in the scale. Then we can't go wrong. We could just go bananas right here. And let's set the probability really low on all of these. Or like middle low. <laughs> just get a whole bunch of random craziness going here. Now we have low probability, but also many notes. So there's some probability that some note is going to be played. And this is going to sound different every time now. Yeah, that's not for me, but I know a lot of people are definitely going to enjoy that. So have fun MacGyvering with that shit. Something else that makes life easier when you're editing is the linked tracks function. Now we can actually link tracks together too. So say, wait, what if I had a double of this right here? A layered sound. Maybe I would choose to go with the Lost Emperor. Paying respects to the dear leader. Now, if I made a change to this one, I would obviously want it to affect this one as well. Now that we have our Lost Emperor fellow leadership by our side, we can select both of these tracks and link them. See, whatever I, wherever I press here, both of them will be chosen. We can even link many like that. Delete that part, for example. It's, if you have like five different tracks and you want to make a drop somewhere, say we wanted to make a drop here and we wanted all of our lead synths and basses to go out, we could link them together and remove them like that easily. I would like a function. Let me know if this already exists, but I would like it to where we can link clips together. So if I made a change up here and added some notes, celebrating our dear leader it would get updated over here too so i don't need to replace them i don't know maybe there's a way to do that i'm a noob at this cpu meters press down here we can see the cpu usage so eddie processor hogs taking up cpu power right here we can quickly analyze them and terminate them maybe by going into I don't know, we could freeze the track or something like that if we need to save some power. And having a look-see up here, we can also display the average and current CPU usage. I'm running the DirectX right now to capture the sound, so yeah. <laughs> My computer can handle way more than that, let me tell you that. Oh yeah, comping. If you use any other DAW to track vocals or uh, guitars or instruments, whatever, recording through the sound card before, then you're probably spoiled with having this takes function, like in Logic Pro, Reaper, 
Pro Tools. That used to be a little bit of a pain in the ass before, but check this out. I'm gonna solo this track. Recording, recording in multiple takes, making sure that we get the best one. Now we don't need to worry about overdubbing this one, we can just go again. Recording, recording the multiple takes, making sure that we get the best one. One more. Recording, recording the multiple takes, making sure that we get the best one. Sometimes the singer might become a little bit off in rhythm and usually when you record singers, they want to choose between 30 different takes, every single little syllable and phrase. So they're gonna love this. Now let's show our take lanes. Recording, recording the multiple takes, making sure that we get the best one. Yeah, just by double clicking this right here. Now we can cherry pick our favorite parts. Recording multiple takes, making sure or we get the best one. Some highly sought after feature activity update there that makes it a much more use, usable digital audio workstation for tracking vocals and other stuff. And of course, the follow tempo. I have this up here. If you go into preferences, link tempo MIDI, and make sure that this is checked, you can ch choose your input channel right here. So for example, a microphone. I'm using the webcam microphone right now, rooted in the software. So that one is chosen right there. Now Ableton Live can just follow us along in the rhythm by listening to our voice or to our hand claps or to our farts or what the band is playing and calculating the rhythmization from there. Yeah, 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 yeah. See there, it detected the BPM and slowed it down to 74 because that's... Oh, now it's listening to my voice and we're talking... I wonder what's happening if we try to speak really fast to make sure the tempo is going up and 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 for that we can't... Yeah, so that's pretty cool if you're playing live, I guess. That about sums it up. That's the stuff that I thought was cool. It has a lot of minor updates and, and uh, most of them, major the majority of them seem to have to do with the polyphonic aftertouch. So if you have a push two, you're going to be able to control it with more precision and expression. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Should I get a push too? Let let me know. Shout out to all of my patrons, you know what I'm saying? My astronauts. Make sure to join us also in the Discord. Check out all the free sample packs I have on my website and a new mini school if you're a machine user especially or or if you just own massive okay bye bye